Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, working on grade 11 mathematics. So in this case, we are going to be focusing with the analytical geometry from the June 2018 question paper. That was a mid-year question paper for the Gauteng province. Uh, that is what we are going to focus with, uh, paper two. Uh, question paper that was a uh, question one on analytical geometry so we are given the first part in the sketch that we are given below we have got uh, the coordinates of the uh, of the vertices of triangle a b c that is uh, a b and c so if you have to check here we are given our triangle a b c this is the diagram in full our triangle a b c with the vertices a b and c from this in same information that you are given, we are given that point F is a point on AC. Take note, it's a point that is on AC such that AF is equal to CF. So these two, they are equal from A to F. This is what we have from point A to F. It is equal from F to C, even though it does not make sense on your diagram here. You work with the instruction that you're given that these two, they are equal from A to F and from C to F, we are told that these two, they are equal. So what does, it mean? What does this part mean? It means this F is actually our midpoint. So this is a midpoint, all right? Because we have got equal distance there. Line BF and line BC make an angle of theta and alpha respectively. So BF, this one, it makes an angle of theta with the vertical, uh, with the horizontal, which is the x-axis that makes it the angle of inclination. And also our alpha here, that is uh, between the line uh, B, C in this case, this is our B, C as indicated, okay? So that is what you're given. Uh, from our sketch, and we're given the first part of the question, that is our question 1.1, we are given to calculate the gradient of line B, C, and that is a two marks for that. Okay, so we've got B and C, this is our point B, and we've got our point C here, so we can just name our points X1 and X2, this is B, C, so we can just name X1, Y1, and our C, X2, Y2. Knowing that the gradient can be formulated or can be taken from this formula. So this is 1.1. So the gradient of BC is going to be taken from the formula of gradient. That is the change in Y over the change in X. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, which is simply from the change in Y over the change in X. So here we can substitute our values, remember, y2 we say this is our y2 that is negative 5 so we're going to have negative 5 minus y1 or y1 which is 3 so this is going to be 3 everything over x2 our x2 that is 7 minus x1 our x1 which is a 5 so this you plug in your values in the calculator or just insert everything in your calculator this is going to be a negative 4 so this is giving us the gradient of uh, line BC, all right? So that is the gradient uh, from the change in Y over the change in X. Then uh, from 1.2, we are now given to calculate the coordinates of point F. That is two marks for that F. Remember what we said about the point F. We said F is in between AF and CF, and therefore F is the midpoint. So what you're simply going to do is to calculate the midpoint of uh, these uh, two points A and, and C, okay? So that is uh, from, from point A and from point C. Uh, F is the midpoint, all right? So we can calculate this. Uh, that is going to be a 1.2. So 1.2 in this case. So remember that uh, F, we say this is the midpoint. So if F represents the midpoint, that means we are going to obtain our F from the formula for midpoint. Therefore, our F is going to be equal to all right, so we can just even indicate this direct. Our F is going to be X1 plus X2. Uh, that is X1 plus X2 over 2 into Y1 plus Y2 over 2. This is your midpoint formula, which you're given in your formula sheet. But take note, this is the midpoint of AC. So we are saying in this case here, this is the midpoint, not just a midpoint, but of line AC. And we have the point A. Uh, from our diagram, we are given the point A minus 1, 1, and the point C, which is 7, negative 5. So our point A, remember, this is 1, uh, negative 1, 1, actually. And our point C is uh, given as uh, 7, negative 5 from our diagram. So 
We use this, we can just name to say this is our x1, y1, this is our x2, y2. So this we can substitute into the formula to find our f. So our f therefore is going to be x1, that's negative one plus seven. Negative one plus seven over two into y1 plus y2, that's your y1 is one, y2 is negative five. So that's one plus y2, which is a negative five. So a plus and a minus, that's a minus, or you can just plug in your values into the calculator, uh, you obtain your answers direct. So this is going to give us a three, and this is going to give us a negative two. All right, so this is what you're going to obtain in this case, that is F, the midpoint of AC. So that means we can um, just indicate our point F. You never know, maybe we might need this uh, point F. We said that that's three, negative two. So I'm just going to write here three, uh, negative two. We might need the uh, this point, you never know. Okay, the other part of the question on one point three was to determine the equation of uh, the, the median BF, that is uh, from B to F. If you had to check here, uh, this is what we have. B to F, and we need to find the equation of uh, this part BF when they are saying the median, that is, it is taken to the midpoint. So in order for, remember, like what I was saying, we need this point F now. So meaning to say we are supposed to continue from the point F that you are given and from the point B, all right? So remember that the equation of a line, so let me just write our answer here. So this is 1.3, all right, so 1.3. So we need the equation, uh, the equation, of uh, BF, the equation of BF. Okay, so the equation of BF, like I said, we can't calculate this from the points that you're given. Remember, we need the gradient and so forth. Uh, taking from different formulas that you can use to determine the equation, remember that you can have our equation from y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1, which we can use to find the gradient, I mean the equation, or we can apply uh, this equation that is y is equal to mx plus c direct from this we can determine but as you can see from both equations there is a certain m that is there which is the gradient so meaning to say we have to find the gradient of line bf we never calculated this gradient so we have to calculate it so let us just calculate our gradient here so you can just utilize this space on top here so the gradient of line BF is going to be taken from the same formula of gradient Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So that means here, this is our B, this is our F. So we've got X1, Y1, I'm just gonna name this X2, Y2. So that's Y2, which is negative two. So we've got negative two, negative Y1, Y1, which is a three. In this case, everything over X2, our X2, that is a three. So that's three minus, x1, which is a five. So if you had to simplify this from your calculator, this is going to be five over two. So you're going to obtain five over two. So that's our M in this case, the gradient of uh, line BF is five over two. So you have in gradient guys, and this, this is enough for us to obtain uh, the equation of a line from this information that we are given. It's enough actually to determine the equation. So what you're going to do, is with your gradient. So remember that your M, you obtained our gradient, which is five over two in this case, this is our gradient. So what you're going to do is to pick any point between B and F. So if this is our, uh, our, our, our diagram, so we've got B, we've got F. So you're going to choose any point. So in this case, I'm just going to take point B. You can use point F, whatever point that you want, okay? So in this case, I'm going to take point B. So we have got the gradient, which is five over two, given the point we are also given uh, the point B. So in this case, uh, I choose to take point B. So point B was five, three. So this is our point B. So you can actually determine the equation. So if you are using this formula, this is going to be your X1. This is going to be your Y1. So what you're going to simply do is to substitute into the formula that is Y is a variable. You can't substitute anything on this. So that is Y minus Y1. We say this is y1 so it's y minus y1 so that's y1 which is three is equal to m which is our gradient of the line that is a five over two in this case so we're going to obtain five over two into x minus x1 our x1 here is five so this is going to be a five like this so you can actually expand the brackets from the right hand side uh that means y minus three is equal to remember that the 
5 over 2 expand everything you multiply here. This is same as 1. So it's 5 over 2 times 1. Also, 5 over 2 times negative 5. So if you multiply 5 over 2 and 1, this is same as 5 over 2x. Uh, 5 over 2 times negative 5, this is going to give us negative 25 over, over 2. So you can actually transpose the negative three to the right hand side so that it can add because it's a negative here so it's going to be a positive three so that means we can actually have our equation as y is equal to five over two x so remember we have to transpose this so it's now negative 25 over two plus three of which you can just use your calculator at once no need for you to represent this stage or you can present uh this stage which is fine all right so this is going to give us the equation of the line that is five over two x so if you simply find negative 25 over 2 plus 3 plug in your values into the calculator this is going to be negative 19 over 2 so here we have our equation so you actually wrote this equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus c so like i said this was not the only way that we could have used to determine this equation we could have used a normal uh, formula that is of y is equal to mx plus c so what are you going to simply do is to substitute your values again just direct into the formula y is equal to m which is our gradient that is 5 over 2 a 5 over 2 so this is going to be 5 over 2x plus c where c is the value that we can determine by substituting the value of x and y from any point that you are given that lies on the line that we are calculating the equation which lies on b and f meaning to say we can substitute the point f or we can substitute the point b since I have taken my point B here, I'm going to substitute the point B. Remember that my point B is 5, 3, where I have the value of Y and the value of X. So the value of Y here is 3. So 3 is equal to 5 over 2 times X, of which our X is 5. So this is going to be 5 plus C. All right, so that's 3 is equal to 5 over 2 times uh, 5. This is going to be 25 over 2. So you're going to obtain 25 over 2 plus C. So you can transpose that 25 over 2 to the other side of the equation. This is going to be 3 minus 25 over 2, which is equal to C. So if you simplify 3 minus 25 over 2 is uh, 90, negative 19 over 2, which is C. So as you can see, our C is negative 19 over 2. So that means we can finally write our equation as therefore y is equal to from this part that we got here remember we are supposed to just substitute the value of c so already we have got 5 over 2x so this is 5 over 2x plus c our c is a negative 19 so plus and a minus this is going to give us a negative 19 over 2 as you can see we are having the same answer just like the previous part uh, using this method of uh, writing y minus y1. So you just choose which 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 part is best for you. You can actually attempt uh, this way uh, or you can attempt this way. That's you have your equation in this case. All right, so let's check the other part of the question uh, that we are given question 1.4. All right, we are given question 1.4, which is actually five marks. Let's see what do, why five marks? Why five marks? Okay. So in 1.4, you're given, calculate the size of angle B, uh, that is FBC in this case, rounded off to one decimal figure. So you're given a condition, five marks for that. Okay, that's FBC. So let me try to figure out where is our FBC on the diagram here, F to B to C. Okay, so if we are to check not uh, from this information, this is, okay, let me just remove, uh, since we have these values, I'm just going to recall them. Okay, so I'm just going to remove these values, uh, this everything, guys, so that we can properly see our question. All right, so this is question 1.4. I'm just going to have it here so that we properly see our question here, 1.4. So we are asked you to calculate the angle B, F, uh, FBC. So that was FBC, FBC, that is F to B to C. This is the angle that you are supposed to calculate this one. All right, uh, depending with the way that you're going to use or to apply, but we are limited here to these two angles, the alpha and the beta. Uh, the beta, the alpha, uh, I mean the angle theta and the angle alpha in this case. So this is our alpha and this is our theta. So how can we determine the angle theta from this part, from BF? Remember, we calculated the gradient of BF when we calculated the equation. We got the gradient of BF before. Uh, the gradient of BF 
was uh, 5 over 2. If you still remember, we calculate this. So meaning to say we can use this gradient to calculate the angle of inclination that is between. Remember that the tan of theta is equivalent to m, which is the gradient. So this can allow us to calculate the theta because we know that the tan of theta is equal to the gradient. Uh, in this case, our theta is from the gradient of BF. So this is BF, where our tan, where our gradient according to the line BF is five over two. So that's five over two. So to find theta, we can simply use arctan. So this is arctan uh, gradient, which is arctan five over two. So arctan is, is simply shift tan on your calculator, shift then tan five over two and make sure that your calculator is in degree mode so your theta is going to be in this case 68 so you're going to obtain something like 68 comma uh, 59 something like that so if you are to round off to one decimal place as we are given uh in that place we are give, we are told that to one decimal place that is the nine is going to change one into two so that's 68 comma two degrees so we have the theta in this case so let me indicate so that when we have these values on the diagram we can e simply tell what is happening here so this is 68 comma two degrees so with the help of the alpha we can be able to calculate this angle so alpha is taken from bc in this case we need, or we must calculate the gradient of BC. Of which gradient of BC, we calculated that one before. Remember, we got negative four. That was the first question that we calculated the gradient of BC, and we got negative four. So meaning to say, this is going to help us a lot to find the angle alpha. So alpha uh, is simply going to be taken from the gradient of BC. So like we said here, that theta is actan of that gradient. So it means our alpha direct is simply Actan the gradient of the line uh, BC in this case. But I want you to take note what is going to happen later on. Okay, let me just write. Uh, so alpha is equivalent to actan the gradient of BC. We calculated the gradient of BC before the gradient of BC was equivalent to negative four. So you're going to substitute the negative four. Take note, this is a negative. It's a negative that you're obtaining. Okay, so what you're going to obtain on your answer, you must be careful. That's a negative which is uh, going to be negative 75,96 uh, if you round off to uh, two decimal places, that's 96. So uh, in this case, actually it was two, one decimal place. So this is going to change to a one. Is this one decimal place or two decimal place? Let, me, let us confirm one, dec one figure there, that is one decimal place. So meaning to say, this is going to be a negative 76 in actual sense. All right, so our alpha, is going to be a negative force. This is going to change. So this is going to be negative 76 degrees. Okay. So we have our alpha, but this negative indicates something. It indicates that our tan is a negative because of the quadrant that we are going to have. If we are to relate in terms of quadrants, this was going to be like this, which lies in the second quadrant. That's what we are simply having. As we are simply going to determine, this is the angle that we obtained. This negative 76 is the angle that is in the other region, in this region here. That is where we have our 76. So it simply means this is where our 76 degrees is. That is the negative. So you can calculate this remaining angle, which is alpha, if you want. Uh, which is the exact alpha. So our alpha, the exact angle is going to be 180 from a straight line. So you're going to use, uh, knowing that equation, I mean, uh, angles on a straight line, they add up to 180. So we can subtract the 76 degrees. So if we are to subtract this, uh, this is going to be 104 degrees. All right, so they are going to obtain uh, 104 uh, degrees in this case, okay, if we subtract properly. So this is a 104 of which we can apply the condition that these two angles, uh, the angle alpha, the angle theta, and the angle that is at B added together must give us 104. That is from the exterior concept. Exterior angle is equal to the sum of this. But if you know that this is 76, there is no need for us to apply that. We can simply subtract to say the angle. Okay, let me just write uh, down. We can simply subtract to say our angle, uh, the one that we are calculating, that is uh, E from uh, this point, that is from point F to B to C. So our angle F, B, C can simply be obtained from 180 degrees angles in a triangle. We know that they add up to 
180. So it can be simply 180 minus the sum of these two, which is 68,2 degrees plus uh, 76 degrees. All right, so you have to be careful. Like I said, yeah, this is not the only way that we can actually uh, use or that we can uh, I have. We can actually use the concept of uh, uh, saying the exterior angle, like we saw that we've got uh, an exterior angle in this case. All right, so what I'm going to obtain here, if we are to simplify, this is going to be something like uh, 35, uh, comma 8 in this case. We are going to obtain something like uh, 35, comma 8 to one decimal place. This is going to be 35, comma 8 degrees, which we could have determined from this concept here to say that uh, I want to relate to the alpha, uh, there is a great relationship between this alpha and these two angles that we could have used in this case. What is the consideration? Okay, let me write it here. Uh, if you are to check from your triangle, this is what we have. This is our angle that we are supposed to calculate at B. And this is where we have our alpha and our theta. So it follows that these two angles, when added together, they give us alpha from the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles, these two opposite interior angles. So what I'm simply saying is that if we add these two angles, if we add theta and angle F, B, C, the one that we are supposed to, uh, to calculate in this case, if we add to F, B, C like this, we must obtain this angle, which is alpha. So it means that we can be able to calculate uh, the angle FBC because we have got the angle theta. Our theta in this case is 68 comma, so that is 68 comma two degrees plus the angle FBC that we are supposed to calculate, we must obtain the angle alpha and our angle alpha is 104 degrees. So this can give us the angle FBC, we can transpose our angle of 68 degrees to the other side of the equation so that it can be a negative. So this is going to be uh, 104 degrees minus 68 uh, comma two degrees. So this gives us angle FBC. So our angle FBC is still going be, to be the same thing, which is uh, 35 comma eight degrees. That is uh, to one decimal place. So take note of the instruction that you're given to one decimal place uh, sometimes we might be we might be given a wrong uh, 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 a decimal uh, part that we are given, but be careful because here we are asked to one decimal place. All right, so that was the consideration that we are given in this case. All right, so let's consider uh, the other part of the question, which is one point five. We are now given if the coordinates uh, if the coordinates of point K is six p, calculate the value of p if AFK is 90 degrees. Okay, do we have the point K on our diagram? We do not have the point K, but we are told that the point K is said that from A to F, from point A to point F, to point K, whether it's this side or this side, but we are told that it is supposed to give us a 90 degrees. We do not know that our K is going to be on this side or our K is going to be on this side. Whether our K is this side or our K is that side, uh, that one does not matter. But we can tell, yes, we can tell from the K that we are given because we are given this as uh, uh, the six, which is a positive, meaning to say our K is supposed to be at least on this side. So meaning to say from point A to point F to point K, which is forming 90 degrees, this is what you're going to have. Let me formulate this uh, the way that they're presenting. We are given, so this is question 1.5. So from point A to point F, where is our point F here to point K? We are formulating 90 degrees. This is our A, this is our F, and this is our K. At point K, we are only given that this point is at point uh, 6P. We are not given full point, just 6 and P. So this is our point K, which is 6P. So this is our six uh, P. The point A, we are already given this, our point A, negative one, one. The point F, remember we calculated the point F before we got three, negative two. So what is the consideration that we can use 
if we are told that the angle AFK is 90 degrees, this is the 90 degrees that we are referring to, it means that A to F, F to K, these two, they are perpendicular. Perpendicular meaning to say the product of the gradients must give us negative one. AF and FK, these two lines, they are perpendicular. So it means that if we are to refer to the gradient of AF times the gradient of FK, the product of these two should give us a negative one if the two lines are perpendicular. But if the two lines are parallel, it means they have the same gradient. So in this case, we are going to consider this concept to say it's perpendicular. So from perpendicular concept, the product of the gradients should be a negative one. So what does it mean? We have to find the, uh, the value of the gradient of AF. Then we find the gradient of FK. But here we are not going to exactly find the gradient because it's in terms of P. Because if you have to check from F to K, it's in terms of P. So we never calculated the gradient of AF. So we are going to calculate this gradient of AF. Okay, so let us just have our gradients here. So we're going to calculate from A to F. So from the gradients, we are going to just use the points that you are given. So let me just use this aside here. Okay, so here we are just going to have our gradients from A to F. Here we talked about the gradient before. So from A to F, remember Y2 minus Y1. So this is going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So that is A to F. So this is going to be my point one. This is going to be my point two. So that is a uh, point X2, Y2. So that's our X2, Y2, uh, X1, Y1. Okay, so let's get to the formula direct. Y2 minus Y1, that's Y2, it's negative two. So that's negative two minus Y1, which is a one. Everything over X2, our X2, that is three minus X1. Take note X1, it's a negative. So that is going to be negative one like this. Okay, so you can simplify uh, everything here from your calculator. This is going to give us a negative three over four. So this is the gradient that we are obtaining from AF, which is negative three over four. All right, with the same idea or the same knowledge that we got here, we are going to apply to find the gradient of FK, but in terms of P, okay? That is uh, from point F to K. So here I'm just gonna have this in another uh, way, okay? So that is going to be my X1 y1 and this is going to be my x2 y2 or you can just have any any way guys you can mention any way that you want okay so that means in this case the gradient uh of fk in terms of p uh is going to be remember y2 minus y1 so that's y2 which is p minus y1 which is a negative 2 so it's going to be a negative 2 like this so that's a positive okay so over x2 minus x1 our x2 that is a six minus X1, which is going to be three. So we can simplify a negative and a negative, which is a positive. So we're going to have P plus two, everything over six minus three, which is going to give us a three. So if you are to take note here, we found the gradient that is of FK, the gradient of FK in terms of P, the gradient of AF, that is the numerical value, which is negative three over four. So with these two, we can substitute into our formula because we know that we are supposed to obtain a negative one. So this can help us now to find the value of P. So the condition of perpendicular lines is on the gradient concept to say, once we substitute here, AF, which is negative three over four like this times the gradient of FK, this is our FK, which is uh, P plus two over three. This must give us a negative one. So you have formulated an equation that you're supposed to solve for P. So this part is actually multiplying the negative three over four, this part is multiplying. So how can we remove this? We can simply divide by eight. If we are multiplying by negative three over four, so you can simply divide by negative three over four, both sides by negative three over four. By doing this, we are simply removing this part. So that means we are remaining with this part of P over two. Uh, over three. So this is going to be uh, P plus two over three, which is equal to 
negative one divided by negative three over four, this is going to be a positive uh, four over three like this. Yes, we can cross multiply in order for us to have the value of P. Uh, here we can uh, actually cross multiply, which is fine. But as we can see, here we've got an advantage. The denominators are actually the same. So it simply means also the numerators are the same. So we can simply formulate an equation from there. P plus two is equal to four. Since the denominators are the same, the numerators are the same. So P is going to be equal to what? If we transpose the two to the other side of the equation, this is going to be a negative two. So it's going to be four minus two. It was a plus before. So it's going to be a negative. So that's our P is going to be two. So the question, was for us to calculate the value of p. So like I said, you can also cross multiply, which is fine, uh, which is actually fine. You can actually cross multiply, but here we can take advantage to say, since the denominators are the same, then we can simply equate the numerators. All right, so these are the typical questions that you might be given. So the consideration that you're supposed to apply here is of perpendicular lines, the product of their gradients gives us a negative one. So this forms an equation that you can use to solve for P. All right, so let's check 1.6. 1.6, we are now given that. Calculate the coordinates of point T given that A, B, C, T is now a parallelogram. All right. What is it that we are supposed to consider if we are working with a parallelogram? This is the question. We are working with a parallelogram. What are we supposed to consider? And this is A, B, C, T. Okay, so let's take a note on our diagram from A to B to C to T, which in this case, we are just given. Okay, let me just remove some of these, but they are disturbing our diagram. Okay, so this is what we are going to have from A to B to C to T. Okay, so this is something like this. Uh, that is uh, somewhere here, not, not, not this way, but maybe somewhere there. All right, so you can just have this like this, all right, so this can give us our point T here. So actually, if this is, uh, a, it's only that our diagram does, is not like actually perfect diagram, okay, but this is what uh, happens actually. If you are to consider a parallelogram, let me put it on a normal sketch because already remember the way that it was presented that AF is equal to FC, but the distance is not the same. So it means my diagram does not make sense also because their diagram was not making sense in the first place. So let me just put it in a normal way that we can understand like this. All right, remember that these two sides, that are, they're actually parallel and equal, the same thing with this side parallel and equal, but this is not important for now. When we are given to find the point T, this is our A, this is our B, this is our C, A, B, C, and this is our T. We are going to consider that if this is a parallelogram, these diagonals, what they do, they do bisect each other for a parallelogram. These are the properties. The diagonal of A to C, this one, and the diagonal of B to T, these two, they do bisect each other at a certain point like this. This is the midpoint and is the common midpoint. So if this is the common midpoint, it means that we can take advantage of that. Remember that before we are considering from A to C, like, our, like I said, my our diagram here does not make sense. But remember what we had before that F is the midpoint of AC. All right, so let me just indicate here. Remember what we said, F is the midpoint. So it means from A to C, the midpoint of AC in this case, we said the midpoint of AC is F. That is our point F. So it means we already calculated this midpoint because we have the point F, this one, and we calculated the point F. So it means here already the midpoint was calculated and our midpoint is the point F, okay? Let me just use this one. And is the midpoint, which is the point F. And remember, our point F was three, negative two. Okay, let me just use uh, this one. It was three, uh, negative two. This was our point F. So what it means is that if already we've got the midpoint and we are saying it's a common midpoint for both B and T, a and C. So it means we are going to use the midpoint concept to find C. So we're going to apply the midpoint concept to find T. Uh, that is in this case. Remember F is our midpoint. So from the point B, which we are given as 5, 3, 
and the point t that we do not know in this case that we can write as x y we can actually find our point t because f is the midpoint so how did we calculate the midpoint before we used the midpoint concept which is f is equal to x1 uh, plus x2 over 2 uh, that is into y1 plus y2 into over 2 like this so if it was the concept therefore we are going to use the same concept now to find the x that is at point t so what are we going to do here we are going to add that's x1 and x2 so this is going to be your x1 your x2 so if you add 5 and x so we are going to add 5 plus x over 2 that's a mid value for x so this mid value for x corresponds with the x at the midpoint which is 3 so this is equal to 3 the same thing for y if we add y1 and y2 together that's our y1 here and our y2 if we add this together 3 plus y that is a 3 plus y over 2 like this we are finding the mid value for y at point f which is the value for y at point f remember this is your x this is your y and our x here is negative 2 so that's we have formulated two equations that we can solve for x and y so we are using the midpoint concept so we can determine for x and y this is same as over one this is same as over one so you can cross multiply to solve for x and y so from the first equation one times five that is five one times x which is x is equal to two times three which is a six so that means x is going to be six minus five that is x is equal to one the same thing with y if we cross multiply one times three is three one times y it's y which is equal to two times negative two that's a negative four so y is equal to if we transpose three to the other side is going to be a negative three so that's minus four minus three which is a negative seven so this finally gives us the point t because we said our point t is formulated as x and y and our x is one and y at this point is negative seven so this gives us now the point t so therefore our point t is going to be one negative seven so these are the stages that you're supposed to take but if you understand this concept all these that i'm saying or all these steps they are not even necessary you just need to uh work direct to the question all right so that was our question 1.6 we move on to the other part of the question which is 1.7 uh, where we are asked to prove that the diagonals of quadrilateral A, B, C, T, they bisect each other. The diagonals of the quadrilateral A, B, C, T, which we said it's a parallelogram, this one. So we are back to the same concept that we we're talking about to say a parallelogram, the, the diagonals, they do bisect each other. But the question is for us to prove that so what are we simply doing? We are simply determining the midpoints because we know that the common midpoint is where they bisect each other. And we have the common midpoint here, uh, which we said our common midpoint is F. So our common midpoint, remember, we said it's F. So it means that with the point T that we got, this is our point T, which is uh, actually one and negative seven this is our point t so with these points that we have we can actually prove that truly the midpoint here is the same by having uh the midpoint concept so we can have our midpoint that is the midpoint of bt so we are simply saying uh the midpoint i'm just gonna write this in capital letters so the midpoint for bt is equal or is the same as the midpoint of AC. That is what we are supposed to prove. All right, so that's our 1.7. So let's find the midpoint from B to T. So this is our BT, we add our values. So remember our midpoint X1 plus X2 over two. So we're going to add five and one. So that is five plus one over two. We move on to the Y values, three and negative seven. So that's three plus negative seven everything over two so this is our midpoint which is the same as the one that you're going to obtain from a and c 
and from a and c we already calculated this we are given our a and c that's negative one versus seven so we're going to add negative one versus seven in this case over two for x so that's negative one plus seven over two for y we do the same thing we add the y values for a and c y here is one and y here is negative five so that's one plus negative five everything over two so we are going to have one plus negative five everything over two so this is what you're going to have the midpoint of this part we are going to obtain three uh negative two from this part we are also going to obtain uh three negative two which is the point f so uh, in order for you to prove that it's a what they're saying, it, is it a common midpoint? So these two must be actually be equal. So that is what you are simply uh, proving in this case. All right, sorry for that. So that is our question 1.7, working with the midpoints, we can actually prove this. Okay, the other part of the equation uh, of the question that we could have used or to prove this was the distance. But it's going to take us a lot of time with the marks that we are given to calculate the distances. That was going to take us a lot of time. 1.8, which is the last part of the question, it was to determine the perimeter of L, M, N, O, which is an enlargement by scale factor 2 of parallelogram A, B, C, T. Okay, let's take this. We do not have this quadrilateral. We do not have this parallelogram. But from this information alone, it tells us that this parallelogram we are given that it was enlarged by a scale factor of two. So meaning to say the perimeter of this quadrilateral. So here it means uh, the perimeter. So let's see if this, uh, that is the perimeter of the quadrilateral, which is the parallelogram of A, B, C, T, which was enlarged from this quadrilateral. It means it is two times the perimeter of the quadrilateral or the parallelogram that is L, M, N, O. Okay, uh, so which is enlargement by scale factor of two off. Okay, so this is the one that is two times, sorry for this. So our, part, our, our perimeter of L, M, N, O is the one that is two times the perimeter. Take note here, sorry for that, of A, B, C, T in this case, because we are told that uh, the perimeter of L, M, and O, which is enlargement by scale factor of two of parallelogram A, B, C, T. So this is an enlarged one, meaning to say we multiplied the one that was given, the original one, which is A, B, C, T by two in order to get the one of L, M, and O. So in order for you to determine uh, the perimeter of this uh, parallelogram, which is A, B, C, T. We need to find the sides, okay? Uh, let's get back to this sketch that I had, A, B, C, T here, so that you can understand. Uh, this is what you have, A, B, C, T. So in order for you to have the perimeter, uh, you're going to add the sides, so you can simply maybe work out on this part, maybe here it's clear. So in order for us to have perimeter, Okay, that's perimeter of uh, A, B, C, T. We are going to add the sides from A to B, from B to C, from C to T, but we said A, B, and C, T, they are equal. So if we find A, B, we have found uh, C, T. So it simply means that we can take the perimeter of a parallelogram as two into length plus width. Or you simply add the size to say perimeter is equal to the size that is we add from A to B. So that our perimeter is going to be A, B plus from B to C plus from C to T. You add everything plus from T to A. That's what you can simply perimeter. It's distance right around the shape. But you must take note that A, B here is equal with C, T. So these two, they are equal. And also that B, C on this side and T, A, they are equal. So noting this in mind, this can help us to find this. So we said A, B is equal to C, T. Uh, B, C is equal to T, A or A, T. So what can we do? Can we calculate A, B? We take the information that we are having A and B, we have this. So we have got the point A. We've got the point B. So AB simply means the distance 
of a, b. So the distance from our distance formula, that's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So this is our distance formula where we can mention this as our x1, y1, and x2, y2. By finding a, b, we are automatically finding c, t because we say these two, they are equal. All right. So this is going to be the square root of, uh, let's just substitute our values, x2. That is our x2 here. Okay, so x2, that is 5. x1 is negative 1. So it's going to be 5 minus minus 1 squared like this, plus y2 minus y1. So y2 is 3, y1 is 1. So it's 3 minus 1. And everything squared, all right? So this gives us the length of AB. So you can just use your calculator direct at once. This is going to give us uh, 2 square root of 10. So by finding AB, we automatically found uh, or determined the, 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 the CT, where our CT is also 2 uh, square root of 10 units. So this is length, uh, which is measured uh, in units. All right. So that is what we have for AB and for CT at the same time. We move on to this part. That is of B, C, and T, A. So where can we, which part can we calculate? Can we calculate from B to C? Yes, we can. We've got line, we've got point B, we've got point C. So using the same formula uh, that we applied, our distance formula, so our B, C is going to be square root. Here, I'm just going to insert direct. So remember, we said the X value minus the X value. So this is 7 minus 5. So we're going to have 7 minus 5 squared plus the y value minus the y value. So this is minus 5 minus 3. So you're going to have minus 5 minus 3 in a bracket on your calculator. Make sure this is in bracket. So we are going to obtain the length of BC, which is in this case 2 square root of 17 units. All right. And we said the length of BC and the length of TA, they are actually the same. They are equal. So by this, we are going to determine the length of uh, B, uh, the length of TA, all right? So we are automatically finding the length of TA, which is two square root of 17 units also. So the perimeter, we are going to add the distance right round our shape. So we are going to add everything right round our shape. That means our perimeter of uh, the quadrilateral, which is the trapezium, which is the parallelogram A, B, C, T. We are going to add our values. Uh, that is A, B. Our A, B, we got 2 square root of 10 plus from B to C. From B to C, that's 2 square root of 17. On your calculator, you add everything plus C to T, C to T is same as AB, which is two square root of 10. Remember, we said these are equal from the properties of a parallelogram plus TA from T to A. This is two square root of 17. So we can add everything. Uh, that is going to be, in this case, uh, 29 comma something. So that's 29 comma 1, 4, 1, 5, and so forth. So this is going to be to one decimal place or two decimal places. Uh, that's 29 comma one for the one cannot change this so perimeter is still in units this is not area so that is why you take the scale factor as it is so this is the perimeter that we are obtaining but it is of a b c t a b c t the parallelogram a b c t so let's take note of this information that we said we said the area i mean the perimeter that we want of the parallelogram which is referred to as LMNO is equal to two times the perimeter of ABCT, which is the one that we got here. Uh, remember, we got 29,14. So we're going to multiply our answer to 29,14. So that's 29,14. If we multiply this, we are now obtaining the perimeter of the other program, which was enlarged by a scale factor of two. So this is going to give us uh, something like 58,28 uh, units in this case. All right, so this is how we can uh, actually determine our perimeter. If you are given a certain consideration of uh, it's a scale factor or so forth, but if it was a direct perimeter, therefore what you need, what you need is the length you simply need uh, the distance formula. 
from the distance formula, you calculate your sides. From those sides, you add everything. Perimeter is simply the distance right around the shape. Okay, so these are the typical questions that you might be given on analytical geometry, and you have to be very, very careful how you simplify your questions and the formulas that you're going to apply uh, from your formula sheet. But for, uh, for now, guys, uh, that's it from Amazon African Motives. Till we meet again.